This is the Getting Into Alignment podcast. Here we play in the quantum world of possibilities. If you desire it, you get to have it. My name is Alexa Ray Smith. I'm a business coach and spiritual teacher for women in business. I'm here to help you unlock your personal power and tap into your magnetism so that you can manifest the most incredible life for yourself and build the business of your dreams. These episodes will help you plug into the energy of infinite potentiality and teach you the tools you need to play in this world where limitations don't exist. On this podcast, I'll be talking to you about energetics, mindset, embodiment, spirituality, money, and business. Everything that you want is on the other side of you getting into alignment. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Getting Into Alignment podcast. I'm your host, Alexa Ray Smith. And today I want to talk to you about building a successful business. This is actually a very late episode. It's Friday night and I just had this channeling come through as I was about to get ready for bed and I was starting to do my meditation and my wind down and I was like, damn, This is so fucking good and this is so fucking potent that I just want to hop on the mic right now. I just want to record this one. So this is for all of my entrepreneurs out there, for anybody that's an inspiring entrepreneur, for anybody that's been building a business. Like if you know that you are here to create your own legacy, to create your own empire, then I want you to lock in on this episode because I'm about to go deep with y'all. And here's the thing is I often say that there's a lot of similarities between learning how to manifest your dream life and learning how to build your business. Because what I mean by that, while the principles aren't necessarily all the same, it takes a lot of grit. It takes a lot of dedication for you to actually become someone who lives their dream life for you to actually become someone who is successful, who is financially free, who creates an empire, who leaves a legacy, who has an impact, you have to be willing to become a whole new version of yourself. And I see, uh, but this episode's gonna like particularly be business focused. So I see a lot of people out there that are trying to build a business but they're trying to find all of these short-term wins. Like they're following the latest business trend. They're they're doing the drop shipping and then they're selling a digital product on Etsy and now they're jumping on the course creation bandwagon. But it's like they're hopping all around from thing to thing because they're just looking for a get rich quick scheme. And to me, it just doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Like I was put on this earth to be an entrepreneur. Like that is just straight up facts as a manifesting generator in human design. Like I'm here to fucking work and I am not that woman that's going to tell you, I don't want to work. I only want to work a few hours a week. No, that has never been the case with me. I have always been the hardest worker. I have always excelled at everything that I've done. I have always been the best because I have ridiculously high standards for myself and I fucking love working. Like, I don't care what I'm doing. I fucking love working. Even at my first job, my first job was mucking out horse stalls and I used to ride my bicycle sometimes and I would wake up earlier to muck out horse stalls at 16 years old than I would to go to high school. Like it was no fucking joke. 25 horse stalls, 25 horses you'd have to take care of. That's if the other girl showed up because one of the girls was a hot mess and if not, that was 50 stalls. That was 50 horses and I'm going to tell you, that equated to me that hard work doesn't equal money. So to me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what type of work I'm doing. I fucking love working. I fucking love working out. I love creating products. I love creating content. I love showing up. I am that woman that catch me working seven days a week, not because I have to, but because I fucking love it. Catch me working on holidays 
because I'd rather work. My thing is, and this is where I see a lot of people just stay caught in this rat race or they really trip themselves up in business and they don't ever get to where they desire to be. And it's like, because they're trying to chase this get rich quick scheme. They're trying to become famous overnight. They're trying to become viral. And it's like, why? What's the vision there? So what channeled through me is business, building a business is like playing basketball. Now, stay with me on this one. If you're not somebody who likes basketball, if you know me, you know I fucking love basketball. That is my sport. I fucking love it. I played basketball for eight years until my orthopedic said, he literally said to me, because I had broken and sprained my ankles like 16 times each. And fun fact, I'm an Aquarius son. Aquarians rule the ankles. And literally in my textbook for astrology, it says verbatim, an Aquarius should never run. They shouldn't even walk fast. I dead ass, when I first learned that, I sent a picture to all of my oldest friends and my sister, like, do you believe this? Because it was just unreal. Like everybody knows, everybody who's known me for a minute knows that like my ankles, I've done some damage to them. But no joke, when I was in eighth grade, my orthopedic. He was a cool ass dude. I saw him all the time because my celiac disease wasn't diagnosed. Uh, so a lot of people know that as just a gluten allergy, but they don't also know that it's an autoimmune disease. So it really affects your bones. And if you don't know about it, and if you don't get enough calcium, your bones become very weak. And that was something that happened to me. So anyway, in eighth grade, he said, he literally looked at me when he held up my <laughs> my file, which was as big as a textbook. And he said, Alexa, do you have any other hobbies? Because you can't play sports anymore. And that was a moment that truly redefined everything for me. If you know my story, you know that at, I literally said to him, I said, well, I sing. And he said, you got to do something with that because you can't play sports anymore. I had played softball for eight years. I had done track for a year. I even did cheerleading for a year. That was hilarious to everyone, including myself. I was actually trying out for, for the lacrosse team. That's how I hurt my ankle the last time when he, when he took me out. And, you know, I had played, I had, I had done sports. Like, I fucking loved sports. And I lived on my Mercury line, like dead straight on my Mercury line. So and if you're familiar with astrocartography. So it was like, I like, and I'm a manifesting generator. Like, I'm put here to work. I love working hard. I love pushing my body. I... I love moving. And so that was a really redefining moment. I think I talk about this in Chameleon, my, self, uh, my self-concept master class, which is in Alchemy and Manifestation. Yeah, I do talk about it there, I'm pretty sure. I'm like, I know I talked about this somewhere. But anyway, that's what I'd always sang. I was always in select chorus. I was always a singer. But that's what propelled me into acting. And then I went ham into acting, and I won the theater award for my high school. Like, I... Anyway, so I'm <laughs> getting off track, but so I love basketball. I fucking love it. I live vicariously through LeBron James. I, no, I am not interested in your opinions on him. I officially no longer have to hear it. I don't care if you don't like his ego. And I do talk about LeBron in the, in the chameleon masterclass. He is now the top scorer in the NBA. So I'm not, I'm not hearing any of it. I've heard bullshit from everybody under the sun, all of the men that don't like him and I, I don't care. I don't care. So you can keep your opinions about Le- LeBron James yourself. And if you do not like basketball, just just stay with me because it's still going to be relevant. I would just say like, if there's a sport that you like, apply it to that sport. But even still, it's just a metaphor, right? So like we still talked about business. So the way that it came through for me, like, and this was, this is what the channeling was. Like I have a, I have a note on my phone that's like long as fuck because I was like, I'm gonna just, I, and you know, I don't do this anymore. We just like, I turn on the mic and I just, I just spit like, you know, I just start going just like when I'm on a live stream, like you, you guys know I'm here to talk. So hear me out. When I say that business is like playing basketball and if you don't know who these people are, just bear with me because I'm going to explain it, right? So 
I want you to think about Steph Curry, whether you know him or not. If you know him, this will make sense. He is one of the most clutch shooters in the NBA. He can drop three three pointers from basically anywhere, like half court. It's insane. Everybody that follows basketball knows that Steph Curry is a big fucking deal. Like he is an excellent player and it is because of his ability to shoot. And a lot of people though don't understand or not, I guess, understand, but they haven't done their research on him. The reason why Steph Curry is now one of the best, if not arguably the best shooter in the NBA was because back before anybody knew who he was, he used to make himself shoot 30 free throws from like after practice every single day he would do this. And if he missed one, he would start. So he would go to 30 and if he missed one, he would start back at zero no matter where he was in that. So that meant that he focused on shooting shots and making them To the point where most people would never have the discipline to do that. Most people would never put in that much work. Most people would work out, go to practice. And if you've played basketball or if you have been to basketball practice, like it's no fucking joke. I was like, I I went to a very small school. There were six females in my grade the entire time at most, typically five. So it was like, We were young. Like I started playing basketball when I was in first grade, you know, like, and I played up until eighth grade. And it was like, I know that they probably don't call them suicides anymore because like that word has just got like such a bad stigma, but they used to call them suicides back in the day where it's like, you would have to run and then like touch the line and like run back. Like it's excruciating. And a lot of people like, I don't like basketball. They just run back and forth in the squeaking. And it's like, what to me I just don't get it because like why would you like baseball to me even though I played softball for years like is the most boring fucking thing in the world to watch like you just watching people stand around half the time it's just like I don't know everyone's got their own thing right but like basketball to me is active and like it's hard fucking work it's no joke running up and down the court like that So it's like a lot of people, when they get done with basketball practice, and understandably, they done. Like they out, they checking out, they gonna go do whatever they gonna go do, but they're definitely not about to stay after practice and shoot minimally 30 free throws, right? Because that's if he if he landed all 30, it was only 30. But like that could be a half an hour, that could be an hour, that could be an hour and a half. But it's like he was not messing around. Steph Curry had a vision and he was committed to excellence. He showed up to play at a level that no one else was and arguably still might not be. When nobody else was doing that, when no one really knew, including him, you know, how far he was going to go. But he had a vision and he was like, I'm, if I want to be excellent at this, I'm not about to do what everybody else is doing. I'm going to push myself to the next level and I'm going to show up for it. And I am going to dedicate myself to this and to being the best version of myself. Yes, of course we compete against other people, but the competition is with me. Like, am I going to be the best fucking player out there? And he dedicated himself to being the best shooter out there. And so now years later, he is known for that. And, but years, decades later, like he was willing to commit to this for so long and put in so much extra time that the majority of people would never do that. They wouldn't dedicate that much time to it. And then look at LeBron James. And again, I don't want to hear your opinions about him. I have I have been defending that man for years now. When I worked for the New York State government, I used to have a whiteboard on my desk and other people would like write the weather. And I was like, what are you doing? Like people can just look at their weather app. I literally had LeBron James's stats <laughs> like every single day I updated his stats. And people would be like, why are you doing that? And I said, every game that he plays, he's breaking history. 
Like he's making history and they didn't get it. And I was like, this man is a legend. He's a legend. Like you don't like, you're not paying attention if you don't know what I'm talking about. And men think it's hilarious because they try and like be like, oh, you like basketball? You're a little blonde girl with your long ass nails and with your tattoos. And then they they sit with me or we have a conversation and they're like, oh, snap. Like if y'all know, I used to be I used to see a guy who he didn't play in the NBA in America, but he was in the professional league in Mexico. And he even like thought I was just like, oh, yeah, you like basketball. You're just saying that. Nah, like I fucking love basketball. I can have a really serious conversation with you about basketball. Like I study the game. Like I argue that one day when basketball understands how important energy is that they can come hire me to, uh, to be an energetic coach for them because like they need it. But anyway, like I, I dead ass know, like I know my shit. So LeBron James, he if you asked his high school his high school coach, he wasn't above average as a player. Like, he really wasn't. But over the years, he has dedicated so much time to working on himself. He spends so much fucking money to this day on his body. And that is why he has been in the NBA for as long as he has. His career is is insane. The amount of time that he has been playing and not just been playing, but what was it? His 17th season when he became, he is now the top scorer in all time, top scorer in NBA history. He has outranked every other major player out there, every other one. And it is because he was committed to his vision. He was committed and dedicated to showing up for the player that he wanted to be. And it's not just shooting. Like I will give everyone that he's not great at free throws. He lets the, he lets the pressure get to him. Like he's not, he's not clutch there, but he's, he's fucking killer on the court. A lot of people say he likes to, he likes to be the main show. Look at his assists, homie. He gets triple doubles all day long because he is actually out there for the players and for the team. Anyway, what I, what I'm getting at though is, and those are the only two players I'm going to use because I get that y'all might not be basketball fans, but this is like literally what channeled through to me. They literally showed up every single day to be the best version of themselves They committed themselves to doing what other people were not willing to do. And that's why they outshine. That's why they outperform. That's why people will pay big money to have them on their team because those two players alone can make or break a team, literally. With the amount of points that those two guys can score in a game, it's insane. And of course, LeBron takes a step back now with his age since he did get to the record and everything. But if you saw him when he was on Cleveland and the Cavs had a shitty ass lineup and and Love kept getting hurt and being injured and all of that, like the shit that that man had to do, the amount of points that he had to score in a game to even keep them in competition in the Eastern League, it was insane. So it's like, how did they get here? They they were committed to excellence. They were committed to themselves. They had a vision and they didn't expect it to come overnight. They put the work in day in and day out to become the best and they became it. It wasn't about a get rich quick scheme. It wasn't about becoming famous. And the thing is, is this is what I see so many people doing wrong in business. I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I tell you that you can, things can be easy. Like when it comes to manifestation, when it comes to life, things can be easy. You don't need to make everything hard and harder than it has to be and overcomplicate things. But I'm not going to lie to you. Becoming an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. It's honestly not. It is so much fucking easier for you to set an alarm and follow a 40 hour schedule and go work for a micromanaging boss and have a 
fixed income, quote unquote. I say that because I, I truly hate that terminology because I don't believe it's a thing. But anyway, like to have a biweekly paycheck, to get your health insurance, to know that you could just show up and you don't really have to work that hard because there's going to be somebody who works really hard and does all the work. If you want to be one of those lazy people, you can still get a paycheck and barely work. But it's like, that's fucking easy. People will complain all day long about their boss, about having to work. And I wish I could just win the lottery. Y'all know that doesn't work. If you're in my world, you know that doesn't work. But it's like building a business is the hardest thing you'll ever fucking do. It really is. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, the majority of people are employees. The factory schooling system, I'm not going to go on that rant. You know I've done it before. I've got a whole YouTube video on it. The factory schooling system, which is what the public schooling system is, is it teaches you to be an obedient employee. It doesn't teach you anything useful. It doesn't teach you about money. It doesn't teach you about entrepreneurship. It doesn't teach you about personal growth. It doesn't teach you about mental health. Like, And that's purposeful. It's intentional. And a lot of people, the majority of people, are employees walking around with employee mindsets. And the people that I see struggling in business still have an employee mindset and they haven't built an entrepreneur mindset. And the thing is, is a lot of people don't have what it takes. They don't have the grit. They don't have the consistency. They don't have the dedication. They don't have the long-term vision. They can't hold themselves accountable. And the thing is, is if you surround yourself with people that are employees or that have a shitty mindset or have shitty habits, they are going to cap you so badly. The people that have become multimillionaires and be, have become insanely successful, they keep their circle small because they understand that hanging out with people like that is actually more of a detriment than like the two hours of fun you might have with them at the bar. It's not worth it in the long term. But too many people have short-term visions and they're expecting success overnight. They're, suspect, they're expecting money overnight. They're expecting the millions to come quickly. They're expecting a viral video to just set them up for success forever. And it's like, if it comes quickly in business, it's going to go just as quickly. And the thing is, is I need you to be honest with yourself. Cause like, right, we're not in a mentorship session right now. Like you're not paying me as a client. You're just listening here. So no one's judging you. This is like a conversation that I'm having with you, but like you got to be the one that has some accountability for yourself. Are you willing to show up for your business, for your dream, for years, for a decade? Like, honestly, if your business wasn't successful, quote unquote successful, right? Because that like everyone's got a different definition there, but like what you desire and what your vision of success is, if you started your business, and you didn't reach that for a decade, would you still do it? Because a lot of people are going to tell you that you're crazy. A lot of people are going to tell you to go back to your nine to five. A lot of people are going to say that you're wasting your time. A lot of people are going to tell you you're never going to be successful. You're never going to be financially free. And I always tell y'all, do not listen to anyone. Do not take business advice. Do not take financial advice. Do not take advice from somebody who is not ambitious, who isn't dreaming, and especially somebody that works a nine to five. Like, let's be honest, you should never be taking advice from them. But the problem is your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your previous co-workers, your friends they're all doing what they were taught and programmed to do, which is to go work for somebody else for 40 hours a week to trade their time for money. And they have one stream of income and they're never going to be financially free. They're never going to have time freedom. They're never going to have location freedom. So are you willing to spend last time with those people? Are you willing to work every single day? Are you willing to create content every single day? Are you willing to dedicate yourself to your business <clears throat> and not like do drop shipping one day and like not following the trends, right? If you want to be successful, if you want to leave a legacy, if you want to leave an impact, 
You have to be a leader and not a follower. So you can't be scrolling on TikTok all day long. You definitely can't be fucking watching people's Instagram stories. That's not gonna get you successful. The amount of time that you are consuming rather than creating is capping your success. And if anything, it's gonna make you feel worse about yourself because you're gonna be comparing what everyone else is doing. You're gonna be watching everyone else. You're gonna start feeling like an imposter. Imposter syndrome is so fucking made up. It just means that you are watching people move rather than moving yourself. I don't have any tolerance for that in my world. Like y'all know that I don't normalize that. If you've been in my programs, if you have been, I go deep on that and I don't give a fuck my becoming a competent CEO program, but it's like, that's why you feel that way because you're watching other people instead of putting your nose down and grinding. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily have to work 18 hours a day and burn yourself out and and drain your life force energy. Like there's a way to build the business and do it in a way that's sustainable. You know what I mean? Like, and are you willing to show up every day for it though? Because I see a lot of people thinking because of social media and like highlight reels on Instagram that becoming an entrepreneur is going to be this like walk in the park. Like it's going to be like you're on vacation. And the thing is, is you have to have fucking discipline because all of your past coworkers, all of the people that you've been friends with for mad long, when they have days off from their business, like paid days off, or if it's the weekend or whatever, so it's like their day off, whatever their schedule is, they're going to be like, oh, so you're not working. Can you go to the beach? Or you're not working. Do you want to go out to drink? Or do you want to go out to eat? Or like, you want to come over and have like whatever, tea, coffee? And it's like, no, just because I work for myself doesn't mean my work is any less important than your day off. And it's like, if anything, my work is more important because I'm building a dream. I'm doing something that you will never even understand. And it's like, at the beginning of my business, that really fucked me up. I'm not going to lie because I would be like, oh yeah, I'd love to go to the beach or, oh yeah, you know, like let's go have lunch or whatever. And it's like, but at the end of the day, even when I would be there, I wouldn't be fully enjoying it because I would be thinking about how much work I could do on my business. I remember the last time I did this here and, and I, it was so much pressure because I told someone I would hang out with them and it was like, they wanted me to be at the beach like first thing in the morning. And I was like, no, like minimally at least 12. And then it was like, I got inspired. I had a bunch of shit that I wanted to create and do like content wise that day. And then I felt so rushed to have to go to the beach. And it was like, why to go to the beach so that I could like, what, have a drink on the beach with somebody who, who genuinely doesn't like working? Because I've never seen anybody, like, I've never seen a lower work ethic than I have in South Carolina. I This has got to be the poorest fucking state in America. I mean, and even, like, numbers-wise, it does show that it's, like, one of the poorest. But the mentality here, people here do not like to work. They do not have a work ethic. And I know that I'm from New York. But even in New York, I had the highest work ethic out of anyone that I've ever known. Like, I'm, I am not average when it comes to that. And I will never accept being average. I don't understand people that say that they don't want to work. I, I don't fucking get it. It does not make sense to me. I, like, I just don't get it. But what I'm getting at is a lot of people aren't successful and don't ever get to the financial freedom that they desire or that the success that they desire because... They don't have patience. They don't have grit. They aren't dedicated. They aren't committed. They need an instant gratification. They need to see the likes, the followers, the money, the sales, whatever it is. And it's like, you've got to be in it for the long term. Like you can't just be in it to like get rich quick because that doesn't help you. That isn't sustainable. That's not going to actually give you financial freedom. And it's like, Yeah, sure. At one point you can put your money to work for you and you can start going out and living your best life. But are you willing to actually go through the entrepreneurial journey, which isn't just like you traveling these and going on these luxurious vacations and you driving a G-Wagon and you having 
a hundred thousand dollar plus months every single month, like a month into business. This is why a lot of people give up because they believed the highlight reel of what entrepreneurship was. And yes, of course, the world has changed now with social media and with the digital era, and it's so much easier. It absolutely is. But there's also a lot of noise that you have to cut through. And the thing is, is the people that I have watched become successful, the people that I've been mentored by, the people that I mentor, I can tell right away, like by someone's actual dedication and their willingness to not look rich, but to do the work to get rich. And I don't mean a little bit of money. I mean, generational wealth. Anyone who is extremely successful, the multimillionaires, the billionaires, they didn't create a program or an offer or sell a product and immediately expect that it was going to that it was going to take off immediately. The people that were like, I know what my vision is and I am dedicated to doing the work to launching, to failing, to learning from my failures, to getting better, to learning all of the different things and wearing all of the different hats that you have to wear as an entrepreneur, especially at the beginning of your journey, when you don't have all of the money coming in, when you don't have a team to help you, when you're doing a lot of the work and you aren't hanging out with your old friends anymore and you're not going to the bar anymore and you're not wasting your money anymore and you're investing a lot more money than you're generating back because you understand that you're your biggest return on investment and you are investing in you and you're doing the work on you because you know it's going to pay off long term. But a lot of people won't do that. Like a lot of people don't want to work. A lot of people don't want to show up every day if they aren't getting that validation, if they aren't getting that dopamine hit from all of the likes and followers. And it's like the majority of the times, the people that are extremely successful online, they built up their following for years before they had a huge following often. The people that have top tier podcasts, they normally had like 300 episodes before it took off. You know, it's like, the people that are insanely wealthy, they had a lot of quote unquote failed business ventures when they started. They weren't there trying to look rich. They were getting rich. They were okay with driving a shitty car. They were okay with moving back in with their families. They were okay with eating ramen or whatever it was. But it's like, I see so many people just wanting to have the bougie lifestyle and to have all of these things that like make them look successful. If you were on my live yesterday and it's in my manifesting membership, I talked about how, was it yesterday or today? Today, maybe. I don't even know. It's late now, y'all. But I was talking about how like it makes no fucking sense to me that these people want to drive these nice ass cars or buy like the Chanel bag and like walk around with these luxury items, but they don't have any assets for themselves. They don't like they're spending more money on stupid shit to make them look rich rather than investing it or, or diversifying their portfolio or understanding which stocks to invest in. And it's like a $4,000 bag might look nice while you're carrying around and it might trick people into thinking that you're wealthy or driving a Mercedes. Yeah, sure. It looks fucking nice and it's a sexy ass car. But at the end of the day, if you're driving home to the projects or to a trailer, like, are you actually fooling anybody? Like, that's not it. Wearing the big chains, wearing the fancy watches, even the rock. He was like, I bought a Rolex when I first got a lot of money because I just had put so much so much into that. Like I was like, that was like such a status thing for me. And then looking back, he was like, that was so fucking dumb. Like I didn't need a Rolex. And it's like, I, a lot of people think that you need to look rich. And it's like, there are a lot of people out there. Actually, I would argue every wealthy person that I know, they don't look rich. They 
made their money work for them. They put the work in. They don't wear all of these fancy clothes. They really blend in. Yeah, every once in a while they might buy a nice car and they might buy a nice handbag or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, the majority of actually wealthy people that are committed to building an empire, to building a legacy, they aren't concerned with looking rich. They aren't concerned with getting rich quickly. They are doing the work to build the business, to investing into mentorship, to investing into programs, to, like I call it, pulling up a seat at the table. When you when you see somebody that's where you want to be, when they have the knowledge that you want to have, when they genuinely get what you're building and what you're doing, if you can get in their world and you can pull up a seat at their table, you are going to learn so much more. And we had this conversation when I was talking about it today, how like it's so good to be the small fish. Like you don't want to be the big fish in the pond. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They want to look like the most successful person. They want to be the most successful person in the room. And it's like, nah, because those people are going to cap your success. If you're the most successful in every room you're in, the wealthiest people are the ones that are humble and they know that they don't know the most in any room. I can tell you that I know a lot of shit about a lot of things, and I am still humble enough to say that I don't know everything about everything, and I never will. And when I find somebody that has the mentality, the energy, the business, the money, the following, whatever it is that is like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm building, that's what I'm working towards, I have always been like, where, no matter where I was at, even if I felt like I was 10 years behind that person, I was like, let me pull up a seat at this table. I'm, a, I'm not going to talk. I don't need to talk, but let me listen. Let me, let me watch. Let me absorb. Let me start modeling what these people are like. And not enough people are doing that. Like too many people are scrolling through TikTok all day long, looking for some secret to success. And it's like, there's no fucking secret Wealthy people aren't holding out. They're not gatekeeping. Like the majority of people are going to tell you, this is how they built their business. This is how they built success. Like they kept showing up. They heard a thousand and one no's. And it's like, what's that quote from Kris Jenner? If somebody tells you no, you're talking to the wrong person. They didn't take no from somebody else. They kept going and yeah, they invested a lot of money in their business. And a lot of the times, if you listen to wealthy people's stories and rags to riches stories, it was like my mortgage like was about to be up on my house. My car got repossessed. Like I had no money in the bank. Da, 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 da. And I was still going up and I was still, you know, like older times, I was still going into the, into the stores, asking for my products to be put there. I was still, whatever it is now today, getting on sales calls. I was still creating the content. I was still doing it, even though everyone and everything outside of me showed me that I was fucking insane for continuing to do this. I knew where I was going and I wasn't going to stop until I got there. And when I got there, I was still going to keep going. And it's like, we can't have instant gratification or be looking for high cash months quickly or looking for videos to go viral or to become Instagram famous or internet famous. It's like, that's not it. What are you actually building? What are you actually creating? What is the legacy that you're leaving behind? And do you actually have what it takes? Because this is not going to be an easy journey. I tell all of the women that I work with, because I typically only mentor women in business. I always tell them that starting a business is going to be the deepest level of shadow work that you will ever do because you are going to be meeting yourselves in the depths. And at the end of the day, yeah, you can have a mentor. Yeah, you can be in programs and be in communities. But at the end of the day, most of the time, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your family, your friends, they're not going to get it. So it's going to feel like a very lonely journey. It's going to feel like a fucking rocky ride. It 
Rocky ride. We're, we're just going to go with that. <laughs> Rocky road and bumpy ride is, is what I was trying to say there. But anyway, it's like, are you willing though? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to become the person to build the business? Because that's how you're actually going to get to financial freedom is to put your fucking nose down and do the work. Like, I know that everybody freaked out when Kim Kardashian said, what was it like last year or the year before when some like one magazine asked her, like, do you have any advice for people out there? And they might have said like women in business or female entrepreneurs And she was like, yeah, you've got to fucking work. Nobody wants to work anymore. To me, like, I truly don't fucking get how that triggered anyone because she's right. Like, a lot of the times people did do internships to work for free because you have to understand it was free in a sense, like they weren't getting a paycheck, but the amount of fucking knowledge and expertise they were getting in their field of study is arguably invaluable. And it's like, I'm not saying that you necessarily have to go work for free, but it's like at the beginning of your business is what you're basically doing. You're basically working for free. You're actually working for debt because you're putting more money in than you're getting out at the beginning of the business because you're building the systems, because you're building your mindset, because you're building the products, because you're building the the products suite. Like you have to be willing to put the work in. And the fact that that triggered so many people and like became such a big thing that she had to like explain herself is just fucking wild to me. And it just goes to show you that the majority of people out there truly don't fucking get it. They are walking around with an employee mindset wanting to be rich. And that's why they're never going to be rich. Let's be fucking honest. Because they aren't willing to put in the work. And even personal development, like I, like I always tell people, it's a lot of work to manifest. It's a lot of work at the beginning. You have to unlearn everything that you've ever known. And the same thing with entrepreneurs, you have to unlearn how to be an employee and you have to learn how to be an entrepreneur. And like, that's why I teach that in conscious CEO. I have a program called employee to entrepreneur because it's like, you have to learn to be an entrepreneur before you're actually going to be one. And That's what's going to set you up for success. And so that's why I mean, like, look at anybody in like basketball might not be your thing, but maybe you love music. Maybe you love film. Maybe you love like whatever it is, pick a, pick an industry that you love and look at the most successful people in that industry. Look at what their story is. It's not going to be that it just happened overnight and it came really easily. It's going to be they were working in they were working doing something to pay the bills while they were following their dream and doing things that nobody else would do. Like even look at Tony Robbins. Like he wasn't an overnight success. Like how many years and years and years did he put in? And now he's basically what I call the goat of the personal development industry. And he makes insane amounts of money. But it was like because he put himself in the rooms with people that were doing that and doing big business. And, you know, like he interviewed people that were big business people. And I want to say it was Jim Rohn that he was working for. And that was his mentor. And he was going to this seminar. No, he was teaching a seminar. And Tony was like, I think he tells this story and unleash the power within if you've ever been to UPW. But he like asked him if he could get a ticket. And he said, no, but you can work for it and you could buy one. And because he understood He understood the mindset, he understood the grit, and he understood that people don't value free things. Not like in the sense that you think. People think that they want things for free, but they don't actually do anything with it. The majority of people, 99.9% of people. And he understood that if he worked to pay for this ticket that was gonna be like all of the money he was making, 
he was actually putting skin in the game and he was going to have to show up and become a different person. And he was going to have to start thinking like an entrepreneur and he was going to have to get savvy about it. So it's like, if you are in the first two years of business, if you're in less than that, if you're in the first seven years of business, like if we're being fully honest, you guys hear me say all the time, like the business coaching industry is the biggest joke on the planet because it's a bunch of women that learn the energetics of money, but they don't know shit about business. And I'm not saying that every business coach is a woman, but the other business coaches that are men are the bro marketers out there. So it's like, those are the people that teach you to cold date DM people. And that's why everybody that's successful on TikTok has to put a message out there. Don't get scammed because people slide into their DMs and they take it seriously. So it's like the business coaching world is mostly a joke because it's a bunch of people that don't actually know business. And because I've gone to business school, because I have a business degree, because I was a subject matter expert in business for eight years for the New York state government, like I know business and businesses typically took seven years to actually become liquid, to actually be generating a profit. And I'm not saying with the digital era that it has to take that long, but I'm asking you if it did take that long, would you still show up for it? Would you still do it? Or would you quit and go back to your nine to five? Because a lot of people will quit before they even get halfway there because it isn't easy to build a business because it takes you forging your mindset, forging yourself, walking through the flames, cutting off a lot of people, including family, including lifelong friends, because it's like, quite honestly, those people are not going to get you where you're going. They're not going to understand what you're doing. And they're going to be that voice in your ear that's always tearing your dream down and telling you that it's not going to work. And so a lot of people won't do it because they won't leave the environment. They won't cut off the friends. They won't spend less time with family that don't get it or aren't supportive or whatever. And it's like, look at Alex Hermosi. He literally and his wife met because he was working every single day and she was willing, like she was doing that too. And like their first date was he said, I want to or I'm going to be working all day tomorrow. Do you want to come over and work too? Like, so they were both just working and she was like, yeah. So it's like, like I was just talking to somebody and he wasn't an entrepreneur. He was an employee. And he like, he, I, the last day that I talked to him, he was like, he said, you're always working. And I mean, I don't know that he meant it in that context because it was a text message, but that's how I read it in. And my response was, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. That's what we do. And he was like, that's why I could never do it. And in my mind, I was like, and that's why we could never be together. Because if you are dating somebody or married to somebody who doesn't support it, who doesn't get it, who's not an entrepreneur, it's going to be an unhealthy relationship because you're either going to have to compromise your business or your relationship and you should never have to compromise. So I know that I went deep in this one and I don't feel like I've talked about business in a while on the podcast, like not in this depth, but you know, business school is opening up next month. <laughs> so like, here we are, but I fucking love business. Like even when I worked for the New York state government, I was that person that I would walk into small businesses and I would start giving them like fucking thousands of dollars worth of advice for free. I would tell people how to file their sales tax returns for free. I don't know that I'm supposed to be saying that because I was on a non-compete with the New York state government for three years because of how highly trained I was, but fuck it. <laughs> we off that compete now, but that non-compete now. But it's like, I, I am that person that if you tell me you have a hobby, I don't, even if I just met you, I'm like, why aren't you selling that? Why aren't you doing that for a business? Like, da, 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 da. like I fucking love business. I fucking love working. I fucking love entrepreneurship. I love, I love meeting myself at these edges. Like it, it takes a special breed of person to do this. And I just want to ask you and remind you that 
The only way you're going to fail is if you give up and go back to your nine to five. If you want to excel in business, if you want to create generational wealth, if you want to create financial freedom, it's totally fucking possible for you. But I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's going to happen overnight, that it's going to happen quickly, that it's going to be an easy road for you. Because this is the one thing that really, really isn't easy. Like if we're being fully fucking honest, especially because, yeah, it's easier technically now in the digital era. But at the same time, now, remember what I said, 90% of people are still an employee. And here's the thing is somebody that hates on you or hates on your business or leaves negative comments or slides into your DMs or is just a hater, they are always someone that is not doing more than you because someone that's doing more than you would never shit talk you for showing up and for building it and doing the damn thing. The people that are haters, the people that feel entitled to leave unsolicited advice and to say hateful or mean things or, you know, like my favorite is when they just comment on your looks, which has nothing to do with fucking anything. And it's like, you have to, you have to even have a thick skin there. Cause it's like, can you show up and create content every day when the majority of people don't fucking get it, won't ever do what you're doing, but they'll spend all day long being hateful on people's, <laughs> on people's content that are actually doing something. And it's like, so it's not easy. You're putting yourself out there like for the sharks, like the haters, but it's like, can you do that knowing that your ideal client is there anyway and that you doing this is modeling to other people what's possible for them and that you are going to leave your family something you're going to show if you want to have children, you're going to show your children what you were able to do so they were able to do it or if they want to carry on the business or, you know, whatever it is. But it's like you were born for this. If you decided to become an entrepreneur, if you have been thinking about it, this is meant for you. So fucking do it. But like, do it. You cannot be one foot in and one foot out of the entrepreneurial journey. You got to jump all the way in. You got to learn to swim. And then you got to learn to surf, like ride the fucking waves because the waves are always going to be there. It's your ability to learn the lessons, to pivot, to adapt, to know that like what you're doing is going to work because you have the mindset, because you've studied the industry, because you've got the masculine and the feminine. Anyway, I just realized that like this one has been a long one. <laughs> so if you're still here, I know that you're serious about building a business. If you want support with building your business, this is what I do with my private clients. These are the conversations that we have. I fucking get it. And I also know how to help you do this. If you're looking for mentorship, you can apply for mentorship. If you want to get into my business academy, Conscious CEO, we do start in August. You will get access to literally everything you know to create a profitable digital business. I will teach you the mindset. I will teach you the strategies. I will teach you how to create content. I will teach you how to market yourself. I will teach you how to speak to your ideal client. I will help you with the tangible. I'll help, I'll help you with the intangible. Like I'll help you with the energetics, uh, the masculine and the feminine. I'll help you with branding. Like everything that you need to know about business from confidence to content, to structure, to flow, like, and everything in between. That's what we're going to be talking about in Conscious CEO. So if you want to join us, jump in, <laughs> like, let's fucking go for this ride because I can help you build a sustainable and successful business. And I'm genuinely not one of those business coaches that's going to tell you to create a fucking Facebook group and to sell a $4,000 program for three weeks and teach it live and all of the bullshit that you have heard in the coaching industry. Like 
I totally think that that industry in that way is going to collapse. It's already starting to collapse. So I'd rather you have a competitive advantage because you built your business up for success because you understood how to do it from the beginning because you got in someone's world that knew what the fuck they were talking about. So I'm going to leave this one here. If you want to join Conscious CEO or if you want to apply for mentorship, I will drop those links in the bio. And if this is the first time you've heard business like this, welcome to my world. All right. I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to go deeper and to get into my world, you can go to my website, alexaraysmith.com. You'll find all of my current programs on there. If you're desiring to get mentored by me, then the best thing to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can talk about mentorship options and which one's the best fit for you. If you're absolutely loving this podcast, please go rate it five stars and let me know why you're loving it. This will help me share the podcast with more people. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And until the next episode, keep manifesting the most incredible life.